Hi, Neve. How are you? How are you doing? I'm great, Heather. It's lovely to see you. How are it's you? Lovely. I'm so good. It's lovely to see you and talk to you as well. I hope you don't mind we've uh, intruded on your, your busy day uh, to bother you with some questions. Not at all. It's always a pleasure um, talking to Arma. Uh, having grown up in Dundalk, just a few miles down the road, it's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Excellent. So I have some questions for you. I've got five questions. Um, we're going to try and answer them maybe in five minutes. Sure, if we do a way bit longer than that, that's grand. We all like a, a natter these days. But uh, my first question for you, Neve, hopefully it's not too difficult a one to answer, is uh, have you always wanted to work in the space industry or is this something that has developed over time? Um. I always had a dream, you know, about, I, I always absolutely loved everything about space from a really young age, um, you know, and, and, and that came from uh, the house and the family that I grew up in. But I, I didn't really believe that I would be able to be a part of the space sector uh, for many, many years. And I think it was something to do with around the time that I was in school and thinking about what I would do in college, there was nobody really around me doing anything related to that. And, and we didn't get to go to the Kennedy Space Center or anything like that to kind of, to keep that kind of dream uh, feeling like I could actually realistically do it. So it's, so I always wanted it, but I've only really imagined that it's possible in the last kind of nine years. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think we're all sort of in the same boat, like we've had these dreams from childhood and it's only relatively recently, you know, growing up that we're like, oh yes, we can do it. Um, yeah. So you've had quite an extensive career and uh, I want to know in your career, what has been your favourite project to be involved in? Wow, I think, um, oh, there's just so many. Um, I think my favourite project in terms of space would be um after it being so difficult i think the favorite thing that i did was um putting it all together in a book and seeing how much how much space activities i've been involved in and so now i would say it was my favorite thing but actually writing it was really really hard and it was like it took up most of last year um and then in addition to that any time i'm working with with teams of people so i would go back and forth to the european space agency to work uh for blackrock castle observatory over the years and every time we work together it's fine and then Another one that was really good was last year, it was the 50th anniversary of the Apollo mission. And uh, I worked with Black Rock Castle and a TV company, and we did a live broadcast from Black Rock Castle on the day of the moon landing to celebrate it. And that was, that was actually amazing because we had musicians and we had Katie Coleman, the astronaut, and we had the chieftains and we had Gavin James. And then there was lots of kind of interviews that were interspersed in it. And my parents were there and it was, uh, it, that was really special. That was really, really, really special. Yeah. 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 That was a special time for everybody. I mean, that sounds so exciting, you know, and just having everyone around you, that must've been really, really lovely. Um, so, as part of your long career, you've obviously come up against some challenges. So I want to know what has been the most challenging aspect of your career so far? I think it's the self-belief stuff, Heather. You know, I think maybe it's an Irish thing. Um, it's very hard, um, well, it was for me uh, to allow myself do what I really want with my life, you know, uh, I would have always been somebody that, you know, uh, would have worked very hard for everything, you know, like exams, doing well in, my, in, in school and then in college. And, um, and then when it came to kind of wanting to, you know, be kind of some sort of storyteller about space where, there, where this job doesn't really exist and, you know, you don't get, uh, you don't get like paid in the classic sense of the word, like you have to create your own work. All of that has been a challenge, but at the, at the absolute core of it is this constant battle with yourself is like, am I mad? Can I do this? You know, why would somebody from Dundalk be able to do this? And, and so the whole self-belief thing I think has been the biggest challenge, but then, you know, as you kind of knock that little uh, knock down on that wall, chip by chip, it's very rewarding and you're going, no, actually, this might be actually possible, you know? So, so that's the biggest challenge, but it's also been probably the most important part of it. And I think it's the thing that people um, kind of connect with 
more than anything else. So people of all ages, I think we all understand what it is to not really believe in yourself, but really want something. So it's that thing of like, to just keep going and keep trying and you never know, you know, and, and, and so that, that's always a challenge, but it's, but I think it's actually the whole reason why this is an important thing to do. Yes. And just hearing you talk, I mean, that your whole answer there is just like inspired me so much because it is true, you know, being from the, the little country that we're from, we just sort of put our heads down and do what we can. But no, definitely believing in yourself and trying to reach that goal is definitely the end game of it all. And that, that was such a brilliant answer, Neil. Thank you so much. Um, and, so, you know, and, and, and like, and that's where our map planetarium is so important because, you know, if, if I had, a, if we'd have gone on a school trip to our map planetarium, you know, who knows, who knows? So you guys are a great beacon for the area to, uh, to make space um, accessible and available to people all the time. So your work is vital. And, and I think like you are really changing uh, young people's perceptions of like, oh yeah, of course I can have a career in space. So you, you have a very important part in that. So thank, you're doing great thank work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so I want to sort of take you maybe away from our little country and uh, ask you, where is the most exotic place you have visited during your career so far? It would have to be, um, I would say, um, in, terms of, in terms of that answer, in terms of space, I think going to the Baikonur Cosmodrome was incredible. It was incredible because that's, a city that's run by Russia and yet it's in the middle of Kazakhstan because it's where uh, Russia's space industry is and it's mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds of miles of desert and there are so many different launch pads it's incredible and it's just steeped in history it's where the first satellite was launched which was Sputnik, Sputnik. it's the first, where the first man launched uh, Yuri Gagarin into space where the first woman launched into space Valentina Tereshkova and you feel the rich history and, and heritage of, of space um, there. And, you know, you could spend a week in the place and you'd still keep discovering amazing stories. And there's great storytellers there that they really understand how to share their, um, their heritage. And there are um, monuments to everybody. And you've got, you know, Soyuz rockets to scale in parks. And the museum there is brilliant. And then just the whole language barrier. And it was just amazing, absolutely amazing. And I look forward to the chance of going back there again and seeing a launch. Oh my God, like that's mind blowing. When, you, when you've only ever seen them on television yeah. and like a rocket launch in itself is fantastic. But, mm -hmm. but seeing a launch of three people going into space is just, you know, it really, um, it really brings it home about how, amazing it is as a species that we have engineered this basically explosion in a controlled way to propel tiny little people out into space and and be able to make that happen and get them to arrive safely at the space station it starts to put everything into perspective and the enormity of even just doing that and what an mm. incredible achievement that is so so that's probably yeah that was probably the most exotic place i've been to Definitely. yeah I'm sure you had a bit of a, an adrenaline hit when the, you saw all of that, you know, and just were on a constant high most of the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like the rumble, like, so the countdown was really exciting and we had an amazing, um, you know, vantage point. Like we were only 800 metres from the rocket, which is really, really close. So, so you know, um, the second it, you know, the second they say go, there's a sort of, there's a delay in the sound, but then the ground starts to rumble and then this massive flash of light. And I hadn't realized that rockets are kind of suspended in the air and they're, they're sort of moving in all three planes. You, you think it's kind of, it's just going up straight. It's not, it's kind of, it's kind of can move in every direction and you're kind of yeah. like, oh my God. And then there's this resistance. So it's like, it's got the, you know, gravity is pulling against, pulling the rocket down. And then the, the thrust is, is pushing the rock forth. So there's this sort of standoff with what feels like about five seconds, but it's probably not, it's probably only like a second or two. And then once, once the rocket boosters really kick in, they overcome gravity. And then it's like, it's up and it's gone in seconds. Oh. And all you can follow is the light of the, of the explosion. You can't really see the rocket. It's amazing, amazing. Oh, and then so there's, there's a gorgeous kind of sound. It's like, um, it's kind of like bubbling. It's like bubbling lava or something. Mm. It's, a, it's a really unique sound. 
So it's uh, very visceral. I got very overwhelmed and very mm-hmm. upset. But like, that's what, when I'm excited, that's kind of what happens to me. And um, thankfully, I, I left everybody and I kind of recorded um, the, what that feeling was. Mm. Because it's, it's I, I, like, it's really hard to explain. It was amazing. I'm so, I'm so, so jealous. Um, mm. So I've, I've come to my final question. I can't believe it's the fifth question here already. Um, so now your answer may change for this question because obviously we're in strange times at the moment. But um, can you tell us, you know, what is your typical working day what is it like in a day in the life of Neve Shaw well at the moment it's um at the moment it's conversation after conversation after conversation on zoom and things like that um because we can't go anywhere but if we kind of if we kind of roll back to what it was like there is no typical day so it's it's kind of like I go through phases where it's a planning phase where I'm at home and I'm having lots of conversations and I'm planning and then it's sort of execution phase and execution phase usually means I'm out the door. I'm, um, I'm meeting people to plan or we're running out um, a family event or, um, or a, a talk uh, or I'm on the go either visiting the European Space Agency and conducting interviews or doing research for a show, a theatre show, or an interview for my own kind of uh, my own kind of work and trying to kind of capture the story of space, um, or I'm kind of providing information for the media, or I'm writing a piece. So it's mm-hmm. all about producing uh, information that I want to relate to the general public in mm-hmm. in any sort of form of of what that can take. So it can be either an event that's run by uh, yourselves or Black Broadcast Observatory or for Science Foundation Ireland or uh, it's the European Space Agency, or it's me on the go doing something and then taking video and then bringing it back and either sharing it on Instagram or mm-hmm. uh, making kind of a video after the fact. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then always it's all about me kind of getting one step closer to getting to space. And, and so all of that work helps me kind of provide a really good CV for the day when somebody goes, it's time to put a storyteller in space. And who should mm-hmm. that be? Sure, look at this one. She's been doing it for years. <laughs> Um, so even all the meetings on that journey. Now, yeah and even all the meetings now are still always kind of making that you know always credentializing myself and and making yes. myself a valuable contributor to uh, sharing the beautiful uh amazingness of space definitely oh Nate, that was a, that was a lovely answer um now i know that was our last question but i do want just one more thing from you and i think it's something you like talking about i was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your book dream big if that's okay yeah, so, so, so in 2018, um, I was approached by Mercier Press, the publishers, and they said, would you write a book? And I had been asked, um, I had been asked like twice before, and like, I was like, oh no, I was too afraid. But, but I did, you know, you don't know what it is to write a book until you actually write a book. But, but the, um, the person that I met, um, Patrick O'Donoghue, kind of really explained the process really clearly to me. And, and he had kind of, I had seen him a few times at my talks and stuff. And he said, like, every time you get up on stage and talk, he said, it always feels like there's not enough time. And he said, I just think you're screaming out to tell your story. And I was like, um, OK. So uh, I kind of started and I really didn't know what I was doing. But suddenly I had realized that I kind of gathered a lot of information already. And uh, it was a really interesting exercise. It's very, very hard because it takes so long to write a book and the editor, the editing part of it is really important because they help you kind of make sure that you don't overwrite about something. And if there's missing pieces, they'll tell you. And, uh, and then suddenly I, I had a book. And, and so it's, uh, it's sort of like a memoir of why it took me so long to allow myself to, uh, be a part of something that I always was had a passion for. So that's kind of the first half of the book. And, you know, all the different things I did along the way and how it kind of made me who I am today. And then the second half of the book is about, well, once I made that decision, these are all the things that happened. So they kind of describe in more detail, you know, um, my time in America when I was, mm. when I took part in the Space Studies program and then the people I met from that that took me on the simulated Mars mission and and then all the people I met as a consequence of that and seeing a rocket launch and, and being in a zero gravity flight and then the last chapter is about, so I've done all this, so how is this going to help me get to space? So it kind of explains why I have to do this and why it, I hope that by me being a storyteller, I can help people kind of reflect on their own lives and really think about our place in space. You know, really think for, the, for yourself about what that means. So, yeah, so that's the book. 
And uh, people out there watching this video, make sure you get that book because, you know, Neve's worked so hard for this. It takes an awful lot of self-discipline to write a book and hopefully you'll be able to see that book in the Arma Observatory and Planetarium shop whenever we open, eventually, whenever that will be. Um, Neve, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to speak to us today. I, I could honestly speak to you for hours. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you for joining us, everyone, for this interview with Neve Shaw. Um, we hope to speak to her again soon. Thanks very much, everyone. and. Bye-bye. Thanks, Heather. Bye. No problem.